Hi there, LinkedIn family. Jonathan here, founder and CEO of Potency.world, an education revolution for girls and unlocking the potential of girls from 11 to 18. So it's been a while since I've posted anything that I've recorded recently, so to speak, but I, uh, I saw this book. Um, it was named actually in another book I was reading. You can't see in that it says mistakes were made, open brackets, but not by me. So, <clears throat> I know we like to think that we are masters of our own lives. And uh, an excellent metaphor that's in that book um, is that your emotional being is like the elephant and your prefrontal cortex is like the rider of the elephant. The rider may want the elephant to go left, right, onwards. Elephant's going to go where it wants to go. Um, and that expanded this metaphor in my mind. So basically, what happens is we can't even remember why we chose something and right so here's the experiment they take 20 volunteers for the sake of argument 10 male 10 female heterosexual in this example and they show these people a series of two photos each pairs of photos so i say which one of those do you fancy basically and they went oh i want this one that one that one and the people went through this they said okay go outside have a cup of tea then we're going to get you back in and find out you know why uh, a bit about more a bit more about your choices basically so they go out volunteers have a cup of tea go for a wee come back and then the researcher showed them the picture they did not choose and within five minutes of making a different choice, the brain starts making up a story to yourself about why you're now doing the thing you're doing, even though that wasn't the thing you chose to do. So <clears throat> we subvert our true potential because this thing, so I've now read it in two books, great new word confabulation the inner narrative the story we're telling ourselves because it is a story about today about where we are in life you know what sort of lifestyle we should have what sort of partner we should have and basically our ego and our confabulation conspire continuously to make us the masters of our own narrative now, I say conspire because here's the thing. So good is our mind at telling us a story about where we are the hero that it means we do not learn from our mistakes because, <laughs> as it says in the brackets, mistakes were made, but not by me. The tendency, no, the... Uh, the oh the need of the consciousness to maintain itself in an in a positive narrative is quick it is completely beyond our consciousness and it means that we are not making informed choices because we cannot accept that we have made any mistakes in a situation. Um, it goes on, uh, talks about uh, another area whereby you'll have two people in, in a disagreement. And if you ask each person separately, you know, who, what they thought was going on and who was to blame, we always blame the other person. And in the narrative in our heads, and if we're asked to, to recount it to someone, what happens is we minimize all the things that we did that contributed to the situation. It takes two to tango. But we maximize all the things that we perceive, that the slight, the damage, the, the uh, violence, the microaggressions of the other party. And it's the reason why, you know, 
long-standing civil wars, Palestine, Israel, obviously, Northern Ireland, obviously, other areas of the world that I don't know about, but they're in civil war as we speak. The situation is this, that if we can't even remember a choice about whether or not we fancied someone, the whole concept of governments, of institutions, of any account of truth ceases to exist. And we can therefore only navigate when we understand how our brains manipulate the world as we experience it. Because most of us are not aware that we tell ourselves a story. Most of us are just living that story. And we don't narrate or comment on the narrator because that's just the story. When you learn to uh, meditate and to watch emotions arise and fall as they do in the body, um, you have the opportunity to look at this and maybe stop yourself but bottom line is this i mean don't don't buy it if you don't like having your head fucked because it really will fuck you up um and so much have i learned from it and i'm gonna implement um four of the pieces of advice immediately and as i reflected on one uh, slight in my own life I've been able to now have the compassion for the other individual because I now know that they can't ever admit that they were wrong and so the the benefit to someone who can take the truth who can admit that they made the mistakes then you have the opportunity because this was the only thing that was bothering me in my mind i don't really care about anything this one thing kept on cropping up and as a result of my changing my thinking around what i do and around how tied up other people are with this confabulation now every time i read something it goes into the mix for potency.world it seems to me that there is enough understanding in the world to pre-program humans with the latest advice and that's what's going to be in the 20 percent of curriculum time that's mandatory for girls attending our academies and we'll be covering stuff like this we'll be covering books like i've told you before oh haven't done that review yet i'm going to do a review on the myth of normal oh <gasps> unbelievable listen i'm going to ramble on if i don't stop so uh buy the book but really don't if you're easily as upset because it will upset you uh, because it will expose uh, your soft underbelly and we don't like that happening. So anyway, uh, exciting. Had to do it. Uh, have a nice day and I will see you again soon.